The year is 2011. Peter Schiff goes on a radio broadcast and he answers the question, what is a better store of value? Is it gold or is it Bitcoin? Listen to Peter Schiff make his case for gold and then watch how each asset actually performs. So if you put $10,000 into Bitcoin in 2011 and you put $10,000 into gold in 2011, how did each asset perform in the next nine years? Did gold hold its value? If I'm gonna if I'm gonna put my wealth, if I'm gonna take you know ten thousand dollars and and store them in bitcoms, how do I know that a year or two from now anybody is going to accept them for anything? What if it's a fad and nobody wants them? See, the thing with gold is gold has value all by itself. If I, I don't have to be able to spend it, I can melt it down. I can make it into jewelry. I can use it in electronics. It has all sorts of properties that make gold intrinsically value all by itself right it doesn't have to be traded for another product it can be used so you can see that gold lost a little of its value compared to bitcoin which did astronomically well and that's because bitcoin had and bitcoin still has today asymmetrical upside potential meaning even today if you put ten thousand dollars into bitcoin today well you could lose ten thousand dollars if bitcoin goes to zero but since it has asymmetrical upside potential, if Bitcoin does do well, you could gain a lot more than just $10,000. So the ROI is asymmetrical to the upside. And that's the kind of asset that investors dream of, especially to diversify into. Reminder, Bitcoin is a non-correlated asymmetrical return asset that has the potential to perform well during times of global instability. And speaking of global instability, the Trump administration has just slapped new sanctions on Iran. This is world news. This is breaking news. Rising geopolitical tensions between the United States and Iran took a decisively sharp turn on Friday morning, with the U.S. government slapping fresh sanctions against Iran following strikes on U.S. targets. The sanctions are designed to land another economic blow to Iran crippling the country's major industries. I say, not that I want war, but I say this is good for Bitcoin. I mean, even if it's just one person, even just one person figures out that Bitcoin is censorship resistant and can be used as an alternative to this, this is good for Bitcoin, even if it's just one person. Hopefully this turns on the world. Is there any other way to look at it? In other news, the art and culture scene around Bitcoin is alive and well. That the Chinese government out in Beijing, cryptocurrency, it's a real thing. Bitcoin and Ethereum, if you got a lot of that, you're a wealthy man. But if you go to the Republic of China, get a little coin out, yeah, it's a shiner. See all the sunlight reflect off the currency. They're not doing that well, though, currently. A trade war coming on between here and China. Yeah, the White House in fear saying, oh, gap. Yeah, we got those tariffs. Gotta keep the money in that balance. If you don't study it fiscally, there's no laughs in here. It's a risk for me. Okay. That was Chris Turner, courtesy of MM Crypto. Like I said, the art scene around Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is alive and well. I think I'm going to follow this guy. I'm going to stay up to date. By the way, guys, Bitcoin's price is looking relatively strong. So we reported to you in yesterday's video that on-chain fundamental metrics are looking bullish for Bitcoin. Right now, Bitcoin is pushing up, testing local highs. Me, I'm looking for a higher high, or at, at the very least, a higher low. And as you know, the price can turn on a dime, or the price can turn on a Satoshi, rather. So comment the current price of Bitcoin below this video. I want to know if Bitcoin broke the local high when you watch this. In other news, Brooklyn Nets guard Spencer Dinwiddie will be able to tokenize his contract after all. So, if you believe that assets will be tokenized in the future, this is a really good sign. First reported by The Athletic, Didwitty will issue shares tied to his contract beginning January 13th, months after the NBA originally 
pushed back on his plan to create a tokenized platform for entertainers to essentially issue debt instruments based on their future earnings. Didwitty announced last year that he would tokenize his three-year $34.5 million contract on Ethereum's blockchain, looking to raise $13.5 million for the first year. Essentially, he'd raise his contract's value as an upfront lump sum, with token holders receiving payouts through the season. Anyways, the, the Basketball League, they initially blocked this proposition back in September because of collective bargaining. But after some compromise, accredited investors will be able to purchase tokens for a minimum of $150,000 buy-in, giving him his contract's value up front. Pretty cool. By the way, guys, welcome back, everybody, to Altcoin Daily. My name is Aaron. If you're getting value in this video, do me a favor. Hit the like button. It's a small thing you can do. It truly does help us grow as a channel. And let's move forward. And for our final piece of news, in a rather shocking announcement, all of a sudden, a semi-known exchange, Cobbinhood, has announced it is shutting down Users cannot withdraw their funds at the moment, and it, it claims it's going to audit users' accounts for one whole month. Check this out. Troubled crypto exchange Cobbinhood has announced it is shutting down, but just temporarily, it seems. In a shutdown notice on its website on Friday, the firm stated, and I quote, Cobbinhood Exchange is shutting down and auditing all account balances from January 10th to February 9th in 2020. It will reopen on February 10th, 2020. All Cobbinhood users can then retrieve their funds accordingly. Please do not make any deposits. It may result in permanent loss. This message is somewhat unclear if the platform will reopen for trading or just retrieval of funds. The firm has been largely silent in the last eight months, with rumors circulating for a while, I guess, that it may have gone bankrupt or even run off with user funds in an exit scam. Now, the founder, Popo Chen, responded in a blog post May of 2019, so a while ago, saying that's not the case, though the firm has had problems. So as of today, I think the only info we have is this one press release. Get your funds off of exchanges. Get your funds off of exchanges. Get your funds off of exchanges. There are certain exchanges like Coinbase where it's basically regulated just like a bank. So yes, if you were to, if something, if some reason Coinbase were to go down, I'm pretty sure that everything is insured up to a certain point, just like an FDIC regulated bank. Now, there are lesser exchanges, because I'm not sure if Cobbinhood is on the same level as Coinbase. There are lesser exchanges where you don't have that kind of regulatory oversight. But if you lose your coins, you lose your coins. Now, I personally believe in the self-sovereignty. You be your own bank. You know what Bitcoin was created for. So I recommend people hold their own coins. There are affiliate links to Ledger in the description. I like Ledger. Trezor, also good. And then I hear there are other good alternatives too. It doesn't really matter what you do. But when you hold your own coins, yes, you're 100% responsible. And that's what I like because I don't want to be exit scammed. I don't want all of a sudden uh, Binance or Cobbinhood or whatever to say, hey, by the way, for the next month, we're going to audit your account. You cannot take your coins off of an exchange, off of our exchange for the next month. Get your coins off of the exchanges. That's what I advocate, but you do you. You make your own decisions. Last thing, check this out. Bitcoin's price cycle history. Now I know we've been in a downwards channel for five, six months, ever since the 14,000 peak in 2019. But if you look at this chart, if you zoom out, I think it looks like we are right on track and we are seeing a reaccumulation period from the accumulation period in early 2019, the year before in late 2018, we're in reaccumulation from the accumulation, just like right here, 2016, this was reaccumulation from the accumulation the previous year, or just like in 2012, this was reaccumulation from the previous, actually very short accumulation. Then you see, eventually, there's an expansion period again and a reaccumulation period again. and it's trending up. The long-term trend is your friend. So I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow for the price of Bitcoin, but I know 
like we said yesterday, a $7,000, $8,000 Bitcoin might be a good time to scale in if you think it is asymmetrical and that the upside for this next cycle is $100,000, $200,000. Again, that's up to you. All right, guys, this is Aaron at Altcoin Daily. Hope you got value in this video. I think it's going to be a great 2020.